Hey, what's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Steven Davidson here. Obviously, we're not shaving, but it is shave-related. So, let's get started. We have a mail call today, and today's mail call is from Italian Barber. See the Canadian Post? I'm excited about this. Let's see what we got here. Oh, it's, this is going to be awesome here. Good old Joey Rock, a.k.a. Razor Rock. I decided to go ahead and go and get a couple of items here. Let's see what we got in here. Some goodies. Oh, no, I bet I cut my receipt. Yep, I did. Almost clean through. Oops. All right. Let's see what we got here. Boom. My receipt, three items. Okay, now the first one is real popular, especially, especially up in Canada. And uh, let me see here. Let's see what we got here. All right. Bad boy open. And what we have here is Booster Barbershop Classics Aftershaves. They've been around since 1920. This is the Polar Ice scent. I'm going to go ahead and crack it and see what it smells like. Let's see what we got here. Oh my. That is nice. That is really, really nice. It does smell like aqua velva with a touch of uh, fresh talcum powder added to it. Really nice. And it's really close to Barrister, Barrister Man's Reserve Cool Scent. Fantastic. Boy, I'm glad I got this after all. Already. Okay. I got a handle for my new... Well, actually, it's not new. It's from my German 37. Hold on. I meant to get you a couple things. Let me go ahead and uh, stop the video real quick, and then I'll bring you right back. So stand by. I will be right back. I got to get a couple things. Hang loose. Okay, I'm back. This is the uh, handle that come on my razor, uh, Rockwell white chrome. You see the gap in there? It's supposed to be mounted flush, and it's not. This is the handle I switched off for my uh, German 37. I put that on my uh, I put that one on my uh, Rockwell 6C white chrome, and I put the original handle on this one from the Rockwell. So I just swapped handles. But uh, see how uneven it is? Watch. See, watch. I don't know if you saw it or not. See how it's not turning? I'll turn it slowly. So watch the end of the handle here when I unscrew the handle. See how uneven that is? So this bad boy is getting tossed. And this bad boy is going on there. If I could get it open. Alright. Not as pretty as that one, but I don't care about looks too much. Because, number one, uh, this is a shaving channel. And I get suds and make a mess everywhere. So. There you go. Okay, and there's my new handle, shorter, and it's going in its place, like so. And it fits like a glove, ladies and gentlemen. That's my handle for my German 37. Kind of reminds me of the Mercor 34C a little bit. Now, 
me get a cup of decaf coffee going here. It's cold and snowy today, but no accumulation. Alright, next great next thing is a brand new razor, which I will be shaving with up next. Say hello to the Razor Rock MJ90. If I can get it open. Try not to destroy the package. Well, how about that? Come with some blades I wanted to try. I'll keep them. I want to try these in the leaf, too. Because uh, recently I tried the Voss Cods and, uh, in the leaf, and they were outstanding. I actually got three good shaves out of them. Yet I put them in another razor, I go all to pieces. But this is the Razor Rock MJ90A. And look at that. Basically, Razor Rock saw all the problems that the Edwin Zagger DE89 had. Big time. In fact, it's almost similar blade cap. And, uh, Weight feels about the same. And uh, basically what the Razor Rock did was they upgraded everything. Instead of cast and uh, smelting and whatnot and molding, they went ahead and done CNC machi machining. And uh, this is the result. So you got a solid piece here. And three-piece razor. And this right here is usually what fails. First thing that goes on a Devil Jagger DEA9 is the handle. As many of you know, about two years ago, the first thing that went was the handle, and I had to go and swap it out for my Mula R41, and I put the uh, R41 handle on my DEA9, and then I put the old Edwin Jagger DEA9 handle on my R41 when I still had it. Then about two months later, this post was, remained intact, but this, but this bottom base plate took a crap on me. So, and I never replaced it because the amount of money they wanted for Edwin Jagger was about at that time, and it was DEA nine. It was sold out, and about that time, it was like double what this cost, which was thirty U.S. dollars. I spent more than that, obviously, but that's what came with a razor. Now, I'm going to put one of these bad boys in there. And, yes, it is these specific kind of blades. But uh, let's see if they let's see how it does here. This used to be solid gold for me. One of these in the D89, it felt like, a, it felt like the back of a spoon going across your skin yet your beard was gone in two passes it was that good of a combination with this blade and the de8 now so we will see if we have the same results in this one because they look identical shape wise and blade gap and everything apart from the finish though that's the only difference i really see weight's about the same too so let's see what we got here First thing I notice, it's not hard to take it apart, and it, it fits real good, too. Let's see what we got here. Oops, I down. Yeah, here in a few minutes, it's going to get a bath in Barbara's side. Well, how about that? No blade overhang, folks. None. So you don't have to worry about slicing into your earlobes. And it looks identical. To me, it looks identical to the uh, Edwin Jagger D89 feel, fit and finish. And is, the fit is better, and the finish is better, I think. Handle still got a lot of grip. Mine didn't have much, nowhere near that kind of grip. And no blade overhang while my DEA9 did. This is actually better fit and finish 
than what the DA9 does. But as far as the actual blade gap goes, and the smoothness, ooh, almost sliced my finger wide open. And the smoothness, this is far superior, hands down. The blade gap's about the same. So, that's what'll do it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys Wednesday for a shave of the day. Later.